If you guys wanna check out the South Florida version of a bird wing butterfly, <laughs> that's right. The gold rim swallowtail, uh, otherwise known as the polydamus swallowtail, that is polydamus, is a tropical species of Papillionidae birdwing butterfly. It's, this is a swallowtail that lives in South Florida and it doesn't have tails. It's actually the only species of swallowtail in the United States without tails. And it's got a, it's just got an incredible life cycle and it's one of my childhood favorites. And we're gonna show you all about the polydamus swallowtail in this video. My name is David Fine. Welcome to Keys Moths. We are specializing in the butterflies and moths of South Florida. And we're gonna show you as much cool facts, as many cool facts as we possibly can about these beautiful and unique creatures that we have down here in South Florida. The Polydamus swallowtail gets its name from Greek mythology. Uh, as a lieutenant and friend of the famed character Hector in Greek mythology, this person's name was Polydamus, and this is where this swallowtail gets its name. Uh, there are two subspecies of the Polydamus swallowtail. In Florida, we have a subspecies called Batis Polydamus leucaeus, and in Texas, there's Batis Polydamus polydamus. And, you know, the leucaeus subspecies here in Florida have wider yellow spots. That would be like a defining characteristic of our subspecies of the Polydamus swallowtail. The butterfly is beautiful. It's probably got about a three and a half, four inch wingspan. And the wings are jet black. And, it, you know, like there's some butterflies that are dark in color, but there's very few that are jet black. This one is jet black and it's got on the outer rims of the forewing and hindwing, there is a single row of big yellow black, uh, big yellow spots that go down the rim of the, that's why I call it the gold rim. Uh, along the edges of the hind wing and the fore wing. Uh, the underside is a little bit more mottled brown. It's got some of these reddish spots, which are pretty cool. Butterfly is very active. It flies all year long. And you know, if, if you're a butterfly gardener in South Florida, all you have to do is put a couple different plants in your garden and you're gonna have polydemus swallowtails uh, join you in your garden all year long. And that is a, that is a guarantee. So uh, it, they feed on Aristolochia species. In my time at Butterfly World, in the butterfly breeding department, we have, they actually have quite a big collection of Aristolochia pipe vine species on the property. And polydamus actually became quite a pest because it would eat all of them. There weren't any of the, poly, of the pipe vine or Aristolochia species that they wouldn't eat. And that is one of the reasons why, um, when I call them like a bird wing of South Florida, it's actually part of the group that makes up the bird wings of, of Asia. And... They're all Aristolochia feeders. Here we have the whole Battis um, and, uh, and Parides group that are all Aristolochia feeders. And we have two Battis species in Florida, uh, the pipe vine swallowtail, which is common throughout the southeastern United States, looks very much different, has those, those, uh, that incredible iridescent blue coloration and the short little tails. And the pipe vine swallowtail, uh, does not live in South Florida. So that's one of the things like the, the polydamus swallowtail goes up into central, like South Central Florida and kind of where the polydamus swallowtail stops breeding and reproducing northward. That's where the pipe vine swallowtail takes over and it, you know is common throughout the Southeastern United States. Uh, pipe vine and polydamus swallowtails are both very highly toxic if eaten by predators and so uh, the pipe vine swallowtail is known as this, this great protector of so many butterfly species. Uh, the, the spice bush swallowtail, the black swallowtail, the female eastern tiger swallowtail, the black form. Uh, what else? All these black butterflies that have iridescent blue are supposedly mimicking the pipe vine swallowtail. Um, but, you know, that, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about polydamus. Polydamus swallowtail females will lay clusters of eggs, small clusters of eggs, anywhere between four and a dozen or so on the tendrils and newest leaves of the vines of uh, various 
Aristolochia pipevine species. The, the eggs are orangish yellow in coloration and they have this really interesting kind of coating of this waxy protein substance that I believe acts as a bonding agent that sticks helps sticks it to the to the leaves that they're laid on. But also when the caterpillars emerge from the eggs or the hatch, uh, one of the first things they do is they eat the eggshell and this substance that's laid over the top of the eggs is high in protein and that's how the caterpillars start their diet. Caterpillars are ferocious eaters. I mean, they will decimate a pipe vine. And I think so, as a butterfly gardener and you get a, you have a pipe vine growing and you start to get it growing on your trellis or on a fence or something like that, you get really excited when your polydamus swallowtails finally find your plant and lay eggs. But most of the time they eat you out of house and home. They'll actually decimate your plant. And so not until your vine gets really well established um, is it safe from the polydamus swallowtails. Caterpillars are dark brown and uh, and when they're, when they're younger, they have like a waxy coloration. They've got little orange tubercles and they look kind of, they look poisonous, they look menacing. Uh, and I think if you were to eat one, it would be poisonous, but they don't sting. So that's one thing, uh, the caterpillars don't sting. Uh, as they grow older, they get, you know, they'll get up to two inches long. It's a big swallowtail caterpillar. They lose that waxy, shiny coloration and get more of like a bark coloration, um, uh, brownish color. They do have osmeteria, the yellow osmeteria where uh, they'll emit when disturbed, as, especially in later instars. The caterpillars will emit their osmeterium and it does smell. They, uh, ex they will harvest chemicals, poisonous chemicals from the plant that they're eating and use that in their osmeterium to try and thwart off would-be predator. Caterpillars have a very interesting habit. One of the last things they'll, they'll do, a lot of times the caterpillars will, act, before pupating, will crawl down to the bottom of the plant. And if they can find the stem of the vine, they'll actually chew through the stem of the vine, especially if your vine is smaller, and kill the rest of the vine, which is very interesting because if you have more caterpillars on the vine, their siblings go hungry. Very interesting behavior. Uh, and, and it's pretty bizarre because then what happens is um, that the caterpillar will crawl away from the plant to make its chrysalis. Uh, and they'll attach themselves by their cremaster to a silk pad, and then they'll wrap themselves in a girdle like most swallowtail butterflies. But here's the thing, the reason they crawl away from their host plant is because their siblings, especially if food is scarce, their siblings will turn cannibalistic. And I've had uh, you know, you're, you get your pupa, your J position caterpillar, and it turns into a pupa. And you get real excited because now you got some polydamus pupa. And then before the pupa hardens, if their siblings who haven't pupated yet find it, they'll actually ditch the leaves and actually eat their siblings, probably to get some protein action going on. Uh, and I hear protein in the caterpillar world can be hard to come by unless your siblings are available. <laughs> The chrysalis have two color forms. There's a green form and a brown form. Brown forms are typically found on rough surfaces that would mimic a bark where the caterpillar or the chrysalis would blend into its surroundings. The green form typically are made on surfaces that are smoother, like, um, like a stem or a, a midrib of a leaf or something like that. And so that's kind of cool how that works out. That's pretty common in most swallowtail species. They fly all year in South Florida. They can be find, found throughout the, throughout the year as long as there's host plant present. You, may, you, you have a butterfly garden, chances are you won't see many polydamus swallowtails. But if, if you put an Aristolochia, a Dutchman's pipe in your yard, all of a sudden they come up, they show up and you'll have them as long as you have fresh growth on a pipe vine in your butterfly garden. Uh, they love nectar sources such as penta flowers. Uh, they love firebush. They'll, they'll take nectar from a, a variety of different, uh, those are my two favorites for polydamus swallowtails, uh, even porter weeds. And so um, those are flowers that you can put in your garden for the polydamus swallowtail. Caterpillars will remain gregarious and feed together in their earlier instars, but then as they get a little older, they'll start to go solitary and crawl off and uh, become more solitary in their feeding habits. The caterpillars and the chrysalis are both distasteful for birds and other predators. So they typically don't get eaten like many other uh, species would. You know, so that, that's a, a plus for gardening for them because you don't have to worry about birds eating them. Uh, but if you're trying to grow your plant and your plants are small and vulnerable, um, boy, oh boy, they can become a pest because they will eat you out of house and home, like I said. 
Once in the chrysalis form, they will be that way for two to three weeks. And you, the most common species of Aristolochia to use in gardens would be Aristolochia elegans. And in South Florida, that's cool because it's a large vine, has a large leaf, and you can raise a lot of them, a lot of polynamous swallowtails on this vine. But it is suggested that if you live in central Florida where the pipe vine swallowtail might grow, might live, that this is a discouraged thing because uh, supposedly the pipe vine swallowtails, caterpillars will actually get sick on this plant. In fact, the, the adult pipe vine swallowtails will lay eggs on it, but the caterpillars don't do well on it. They'll actually get sick and die. So if you live in central Florida, you're trying to attract polydamus swallowtails, plant one of the native uh, pipe vines instead, then you'll get both species and they'll live just fine. Yeah, so guys, thanks so much for watching. The polydamus swallowtail has been uh, a long time favorite of mine. You know, from a childhood, I remember going to Tradewinds Park and going into Butterfly World and walking along the, the vine trellises and looking for chrysalises. I remember doing that as a 12 year old boy, not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, now I'm, uh, now I'm in my 40s and still love the butterfly. Uh, it, it's a great South Florida bug. So uh, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got a lot more act action for you for the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Um, and until next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida and Ciao. check out some cool bird wing bugs in our South Florida gardens, the polydamus swallowtail. Take care, guys.